When we fire our engine cylinders and we use that combustion to turn our crankshaft, we create torque and horsepower. So let's talk a bit about those. Torque is a twisting force. So you're using, when you think of torquing on a wheel nut, and you're turning, twisting, that is torque. So when you're thinking about torque, you apply a force at a certain distance away. Okay, so if we were to take a ratchet and turn something, here's our distance from our pivot point, and the force we apply comes in perpendicular. Because we're talking about force multiplied by distance, our unit will be force times a distance unit, which means we're talking foot pounds, so the force in imperial is pounds and the distance is feet. If we are in SI or metric, our force will be measured in newtons and our distance will be measured in meters. Now if you have like our tightening gasket bolts or something and it's a very uh, a small torque, it might be measured in inch pounds, but generally our standard units for torque are foot pounds or newton meters. So here's a better looking picture of it. We've got our pivot point here and a certain distance away, we apply a force. Now notice they're saying always do it at that right angle, at that 90 degrees. That's because that's where you're gonna get the most applied force. You could apply force at a different angle, but then we'd have to get into trick and we don't wanna deal with that. So we're gonna assume that our force is applied perpendicular to our distance. Now, how could I increase the torque on this bolt? I could apply more force, so I can make my force vector longer. So if you have more force, you increase the torque. Option B, keep the same torque, uh, sorry, force, but increase the distance. If you had a longer wrench, right? And you applied your force here, you would increase the torque as well. The other thing we think about with torque is gears. So here is a typical gear, and if you were to apply a force on this gear with from a chain or another gear meshing in it, it happens on the outside edge of the gear. Okay, so there's our force. Now, if you wanna think about the distance, often gears are given to you with a diameter, but that's not what you want. You want, we're rotating around the center of that gear, so be careful on these questions, mostly because diameter is a symbol D and distance is also symbol D, but if you want to calculate torque on a gear, you must use the radius, the distance from the center of the gear to the edge of the gear. So I'm gonna put the D here in quotations. So use the radius, not the diameter. Let's take a look at some torque math questions. Okay, number one, we're gonna apply 50 pounds of force. So we know that our force is 50 pounds. We know that we're looking at US customary or imperial. And our second thing we have is an 18 inch torque rest wrench. So in this question, it didn't tell me that I had to be in foot pounds versus inch pounds, but let's assume I had asked for the torque in foot pounds. So I'm going to change 18 inches into feet by dividing by 12 inches per foot, and that should give me 1.5 feet. So my torque, very simply, 50 times 1.5 and that should give you 75 foot pounds. And sometimes you'll see it is pound feet. I'm a foot pound kind of girl. Number two, how much force is applied to a 20 centimeter wrench to produce eight Newton meters of torque? So here we have the torque is eight Newton meters. Newton meters means our 20 centimeters must be converted. That's a distance. So we're going to change it to meters by dividing by 100 and we're looking for the force so you can either rearrange your formula or put your variables in if torque is equal to force times distance force must be equal to torque divided by distance force equals 8 divided by 0 0.2 the force is going to equal 40 the unit will be newtons because that's our metric unit of force. Okay, answer here.
answer here. Just keep it clean. And on to number three. What is the diameter, tricky, tricky, of a gear that gives 650 foot-pounds of torque when 1,000 pounds of force are applied? So we're going to start realizing that we're solving for the distance, not the diameter. And that's going to be torque divided by force. Just rearranging that formula. So we do a 650 divided by 1000. And that gives me 0 0.65 feet. Now remember, this is a gear. So that 0 0.65, and I'm not going to bother drawing the teeth, goes from the center to the outside of the gear where the force is applied. All right. So in order to get the diameter, which is what the question asked us for, we have to take that number, that distance, which is actually a radiance, radius, pardon me, and multiply it by two. So your diameter is going to be 1.3 feet. Final answer. So measuring the twisting force is one way of measuring engine performance. And you can hear people talk about torque peaks, or you're going to say like at 4,000 RPM, I get 200 foot pounds of torque. Um, and that's great. But the calculation of the torque doesn't involve the speed, that 4,000 RPM. And when you think about it, if I take a torque wrench and I apply a lot of force to it, I can absolutely myself create a torque of 200 foot pounds, but I'm not as powerful as an engine. So we need another way of measuring engine performance. And we're going to do that by measuring the horsepower or the power of an engine that will incorporate speed, time, whatever you want to call it, incorporate those RPMs. A long time ago, a standard unit of power was created that was horsepower. And it is the ability to lift 550 pounds, one foot in one second. And it was totally done by observing what horses could lift. So <laughs> it's a legit name. Um, horsepower, because look at those units, pounds, feet, uh, time is irrelevant, but those are definitely going to be U.S. customary or imperial units. So we are going to abandon for this point, even though you can measure the power of an engine in kilowatts, the metric unit, uh, just because in North America, it's more typical to still talk about horsepower and torque in foot pounds. We're going to keep with that. So here's a formula down here. It is derived from the torque, <laughs> from RPMs. Um, I'm not going to get into what you need to do to get that. So if you're doing this, your torque is going to be in foot pounds. So whatever torque you have, you just multiply it by the engine speed in RPM, divide it by this number, 5252, which is part of the derivation of the horsepower formula, and that will give you horsepower from torque and engine speed. So here's some math questions for that. I'm just going to make note of our horsepower formula on the side so you know what I'm using. It equals torque times RPM divided by 5252. Five, okay, so here we go. First question, we have an engine. It's going to produce 430 good strong diesel engine, 430 foot-pounds of torque, at 2700 RPM, how many horsepower is that? Straightforward, horsepower equals torque times engine speed divided by 5252. Five, two. You do that math, you can't really mess up the order of operations, and you should get about 221 horsepower. Question two, at what engine speed does torque equal horsepower? Well, if you don't know this intuitively, and you'll know it from the graphs we look at, you can just make up two torques and horsepower. You want them to be the same. So let's say the horsepower was 100 and the torque was 100. And we have to multiply that by an RPM. and divide it by 5252. Five, two. If the 100s are the same on either side, 
you just need an RPM that is equal to 5252 to make that true. So when the engine is turning at 5,252 RPM, that's when torque will equal horsepower. Question three, we've got 205 foot-pounds of torque and we know the horsepower and we want to solve for the RPMs. So let's build that formula. Horsepower is equal to torque times the RPMs divided by 5252. Two. You can do that math, I'll just highlight it. You can do this division to make one number if that's what you're comfortable with. And we're going to get 156.1 is equal to 0 0.039 times the RPM. If you want just RPMs by itself, the action you're going to do is divide both sides by 0 0.039. So to solve for the engine speed, the RPMs, you're going to take 156.1 and divide it by 0 0.039. And that's going to give you an engine speed of 4,003. You might ask, how can we measure horsepower in real life? That's when we bring in dynos. And I know that's short for dynamometer or something like that. I can never say the word. But if you take a dyno, you have an engine dyno that you might see in a production place, or you might have a chassis dyno that you see in like performance shops, um, and you put your engine or your car on the dyno and you are going to observe the torque that you can produce at various speeds. And from that, you will calculate the horsepower of your engine or at your wheels. <laughs> you often see uh, torque and horsepower graphs for various vehicles. So here's an example of one. And you know this can be plotted from observed torque and horsepower and then create the graph. Or you can read things from the graph. So I look at this particular vehicle, engine, whatever have you, um, and I want to know something from these graphs, I've said that horsepower is the red line. So if I wanted to know what the horsepower was at 4,500 RPM, I can just wander along to this point, go backwards to look where I am. So it looks like you're about 180 horsepower at 4,500 RPM. Likewise, if I want to know about the torque at the same engine speed, I just kind of go to this point, move backwards, and maybe that's about maybe 210, 212. It's kind of just inferred. So the unit for that, foot pounds. These graphs exist in metric, where they compare torque in newton meters to power in kilowatts, but for the sake of our North American courses, we're going to stick with horsepower um, and foot-pounds. So that's how to get information off a torque and horsepower graph. What about creating a torque and horsepower graph? So typically you'd be given observed torque at a various speed and you're just going to use math to fill in the graph and then your magical artwork to uh, create, uh, sorry, math to fill in the table and then artwork to, to create the graph. So our first one, we know that horsepower is equal to torque, 620, multiplied by the engine speed in RPM, divided by the same number always, 5252. If you do that math, you're going to get about 118 horsepower. So that goes here. And you would just repeat the process for each engine speed and torque to discover what the horsepower would be at those various points. So no need to show you that 15 times or several times. Let's just fill it in. So at 1200 RPM, my horsepower would be about 150. At 1400 RPM, it's 168. And I'm just using that formula each time. At 1600 RPM, 184. 1800 RPM, 196. Still going up. And at 2000 RPM, we are going to get 200. And at 2200 RPM, we get 201. Okay, so what could I ask you about this table? I could ask you where you see the peak torque 
And that's just a matter of figuring out when your biggest number happens, which would be right around here. Very powerful, like a torquey engine, looks like a diesel. <laughs> okay, and I could ask you when you get your peak horsepower. Did we hit it? No, it's gonna be somewhere at higher engine RPM, which makes sense. You usually get your horsepower peaks um, much higher up speed-wise than your torque peaks. And if I asked you to draw this, you would be stuck making a beautiful graph. You always put the RPM on the bottom, start at your lowest, go on and on, 14, 16, 18, 2000, maybe we'll label that one, and 2200. And then you just look at your ranges and you would have your torque and your horsepower. This one is crazy. You would have to start at like 100 to get all the horsepower in. And then make sure that by the time you got to the top torque, you would need to be up to like 700, 200, 300, 400, 500. Ah, let's make that 600 and then let's make that 700. Okay. And then you would just plot points. So if you were looking at graphing the torque at a thousand RPM, you want to be at about 620. At 1200 RPM, you want to be about 657. And these are very approximate. And then back down to 629. And then over to 600. And like I said, it's just a bit of a bad art show here. And then down to 480. Very, very, very poorly graphed torque curve. There's my peak right here. If I was going to add the horsepower onto this graph, I'll stick with that purple. It would be kind of much lower down here. 118. 150, like just miserably low. Don't get to 200, which I've already gone over by my <laughs> picture. Something like that. Anyway, so what I'm not seeing here is these two. I'm not seeing the peak torque, and I'm also not seeing these two lines crossing. Is that a surprise? No, because that won't happen to 52, 52 RPM. So that's quite a ways over on this graph. So that's all I've got for you for horsepower and torque. Um, in a bit, we're going to talk a bit more about indicated horsepower, brake horsepower, indicated torque, but that will be in another unit.